Okay. I'm looking at grass. So I am, um, you know, I want to say that um, I hear um, seasons are changing. It is uncomfortable. I think it's going to get a little bit more uncomfortable. But as you stand in um, the faith, that's where you're going to get your stability. Um, it, it's important at this time also for women not in a way of chauvinistic um, thinking. It's a time for women to really push into their um, female power, the balance. Um, why? Because it's the season of the rising of um, the female's energy, but holistically. Um, and when we talk about whole, you know, whole foods, holistic, what you'll find is people look over some things in that word. Whole is just like holy. And holy is indicative to whole because when you're holy, you have crossed the threshold of understanding what imperfection is and modifying it. So when you use whole, you want to look at whole and know why sanctified people wore the white clothes, right? But they thought it was holy if they wore the white. The, the white is for the purification, for the imperfection, right? And, and what I find is, glory to God, a lot of people do not understand that. That's why when God comes to you and it's a pure word or you see something that stands out amongst the crowd to you concerning the word of God, you need to study it and look it up because when wholeness came to me and everyone was speaking on, uh, you gotta be made whole. What I found is people were speaking about something that they didn't know. So I went and I studied it. Now you have whole foods and whole foods are representative of giving you a food that's gonna make you whole. It's supposed to be a clean food. It's a safe uh, a food environment that you get there. But we don't know that unless we really look into it and test the food, right? So I'm not gonna get into whole foods. I just brought it up because it's a sign over there that says it. So if you write whole down and you put um, even if you cross out the W, what you'll see is H-O-L. So the W is put there because a new word was created out of that. So there was a hole. You see how uh, linguistics work? There was a hole. And when they put the W on it, someone thought of it and it became whole not the hole in your heart or the hole in the soul, but the whole man, woman, body, spirit, soul experience. Yeah, no, I did not. Uh, I wasn't looking at this part, but um, I think that that will teach because when you start looking at mind, body, and soul, then what happens, mind, body, soul, what happens here is this is what Christ was talking about in the instance. Thank you for this daily bread. Yes, thank you for it. This is what Christ was talking about when he spoke, when he walked, when he talked. You see the evidence of wholeness that he was actually trying to get uh, people to 
as he walked the fields and he showed them or spoken parables, how to prosper their life. Nothing about religion, but it can be religious to the person that needs the religious experience. And that's why they had John, John the Baptist. So John was going to be there to put that word in them or to give them the word. See, I can give you the word, but it's someone else coming that will, um, I, shoe, whose shoes I cannot fit, which was Jesus. And so this was an interchange kind of situation where you can see that people grow from John to Jesus. If they look or understand or their spirit or soul has called them to this type of uh, information to elevate spiritually, all right? So what is this going to do for you? What it's going to do for you and I is understand that wholeness is not in our finances, in our love relationships, is not in our children, but wholeness is in the spirit. And if we can learn how to bring the spirit into our life, which is in the, the living word, but it cannot live without us speaking it, then what happens is... Um, we can begin to live the true life that is ordained for us. I, I listened to a young woman, she was talking about business um, this morning. And one of the things that I um, applaud is that she's a young woman, right? On the other side, what I, I look at is myself in the middle of this um, situation of um, earth and, and spirit. To be able to see that John was creating the setup for Jesus means that uh, we can go further, right? And we can go further because John was there and out of John's baptism for Jesus, John did this for Jesus. Even though it's written in the word, my mind is always telling me to look beyond. I can't stay in, this is Jesus and this is John, that's it because my mind pulls me in and says, what, what does it mean? What was John doing? And why did John baptize Jesus? The importance of that to happen gives you an understanding that John and Jesus had a relationship that was set up. It didn't make Jesus grander than John, right? But one of the problems with this wholeness is, is that when you see the, the representation of wholeness, even speaking or on the stage, people begin to idolize it. And he didn't want this. Jesus didn't want to be idolized. So moving on, John baptizes Jesus. And I said, well, how does John do that when he said that this is someone coming whose shoes he cannot touch? But this was his part to play in the process of holiness coming in, holiness, which is whole. Okay, so when we can take our mind out of holiness and begin to really accept what God was saying about holiness, we do find that mind, body, and soul is what God wanted us to give back to him, right? And so the holiness was so that we could be vessels to bring the kingdom of light into the kingdom of darkness. Everyone that received the light, not just by word, but by might and power of the spirit, then what happens is, is that transformation begins to take place. So the transformation is happening and it can be uh, painful um, in, a, in a long stretch, you know, um, there's people that I can see going through uh, transformations, a little bit of information um, on dark night of the soul, not much talked about it. And a lot of it is because um, many people do not see the experience or they don't line it up with the Bible. They don't line it up with Jesus going to hell. Um, there is a belief system that is different from well, I, I would say for mine and what I saw in the word, I believe what I saw from Christ's teaching and what I see every day when I read, okay? And so I believe that my hell situations, if I identify with them, I can get out of them here in earth. How? 
because I look at the teachings of Jesus and I can transform the situation. Now, it's not by my ego that I can do it, but it's like James said, by the, the actions and the power of God moving through me, that, that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So I'm praying how to turn it around, but I got to recognize that I'm my own problem first. I'm the problem that keeps me from wholeness in whatever area it is. And it could be money, love, peace, joy that's lacking, but it's a lack mentality. So Jesus, now he becomes baptized. And when you look beyond and you're, you're looking at it, you say, well, okay, he's being baptized by John. Okay, now he's being baptized. And then he goes right into the experience of being tempted. He's baptized and he becomes tempted. So I had this, I was stuck there. Now this is over uh, decades that I've, you know, I've studied these things. Um, so yeah, I can just talk about it. And that's when the word becomes one with you. It takes time. But the word also becomes contrast to your word as an egoic individual. So in the contrast of that word in you and I that we've been living in what people have told us, the wholeness is not there. The ego may have told me that I'm whole, but inside of me, I've been empty. So the whole is there, the H-O-L-E, not the W-H-O-L-E. And there is no holiness because the whole is empty, H-O-L-E, and the whole begins to act like a hole, a dark hole, right? And what Jesus did is he was tempted. And, and so he spoke to the, the tempter. And, you know, I, you know, however the perception is for the individual, they see it from the point of view of the physical. But the Bible is not about physical. It is about the spirit moving through people and it's a spiritual experience. So people are having spiritual experiences every day that they do not know about, which is why they can miss the dark night of the soul. The dark night of the soul, if it's missed, you'll go back to it and you will not be able to ascend or rise. So Jesus did not ascend on his own. He had to go and look for some people, but he had to get that initiation uh, to rise up out of hell, out of the temptation um, or the hellish mind. So you can see that he had to overcome some things right there. Whereas people won't talk about, they say he was tempted, but they won't talk about where the temptation comes from. So the temptation comes from your fleshly desires. And, and you want to use Jesus because that's your, your faith center, right? And you want to look at everything that he experienced, what he said, <laughs> and uh, how he dealt with it. Why? Because this is like your coach. This is like a mentor talking to you on the side or inside of you, however you can get it. And he's telling you, the tempter came three times, but I denied him. It wasn't that easy, especially when you really um, look at your coach and you say, he's telling me what, what happened to him, but I'm just looking at it uh, in a way like it was nothing. It was nothing for him. And I don't believe it was nothing nothing for him because even when he went to the cross um he said um what was the words that he said uh when he actually cried out um okay you guys know what i'm, I'm saying the words not coming to me but it was a cry of weakness and that's the part that really got me when i uh was reading because I was saying people run away from grace because they can't compare. But they don't understand that you, if you read it, he was saying to the people, again, I say, 
it is not me, but it's the father in me. It's very powerful. He also said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I capture my wholeness through the word of God. And it's not religious. And you have to look at if you are practicing a religion. What is religious is every day you get up and you say, I got to meet with this Christ in me. I, I got to see what Christ, you know, what Jesus is saying. I used to think that his name was um, Jesus Christ when I was a little girl. And um, so I learned better. Um, but Jesus had the name of Emmanuel. You know, Jesus had uh, another name too. I can't remember what it is, but this is significant to understanding because he obtained a level of mastery that people call him God. And it was the mastery over his self. But in the beginning, and I still do not see where he actually called himself God, you know? However, he passed on his spirit as he came out of temptation. Because see, he was tried. And God allowed it because he needed to uh, know that he could pass the test. Everything is testing. When you look at it, your mouth is being tested. Your walk is being tested. Your thoughts are being tested. How you represent the spirit of God within you. You know, a lot of people was trying to represent the spirit of God according to the church. But I believe the best Christ uh, type of individual, and, and Carl Jung talks about, you know, archetypes. So if you're gonna, you know, reach Christ to it, know why you know why you're doing it. Uh, know that it is possible, but know why you're doing it, and be in it no matter what, because the Christ is something that will be there for you. I believe if you're dedicated to it, it will be dedicated to you. Um, and I don't just believe, I know it for myself, right? I know that if people talk about their situations and um, how it was hard in one season and they keep looking back how um, that Christ in them came through, it will compel them to keep fighting to go further and go through and meet with him again, right? Him, her, you know, because here you have not gotten to the place where you uh, have received the goddess. Because you don't know it's only men here. So that's something else later to talk about. But the wholeness comes as he is walking through these cities and calling these people to himself. So John and Peter and Paul were called to them himself. And um, as he called them, they had to use their earthly gifts. And they had to uh, begin to understand how to use their earthly gifts to transform the kingdom but they had to be transformed first. So the kingdom, it, it, it wants to use your earthly gifts to prosper the kingdom of light uh, so that you'll have more kingdom of light standards and the earth will be transformed. That's the whole significance of what a Christian um, life is about and being a Christ type. Some people will be followers, right? But he was training them so that they could take all over the mantle. Because if you never had another Christ type to um, 
propel the energy of uh, the, the source, God, then that means that there's an ending somewhere. Um, families should have this Christ in them. And it could be, you know, someone practicing other religions, Buddhism or whatever. But the thing is, all of the masters um, have experienced something in this nature to bring wholeness so that the healing of the world would take place and people would not suffer. So Jesus had a mission that em employed business uh, owner. Now that's on a physical level, but on a spiritual level, Jesus and each one of them that he called had to um, awaken the faculties of each one of the disciples because they're the chakras. All right, so we're gonna end that there and um, thank God for the anointing and the stirring of the spirit and moving forward into new heights and depths. Y'all have any uh, questions? I don't have any questions. Um, it just, everything that you said was really on point with the things I've recently been experiencing. So I'm actually making the connection between what you just spoke about and what I've been, what's been going on with me. So thank you. All right. Well, thank God you're receiving that. So next, um, I try to prepare something, but it just didn't work out. Um, Psalms 22, I would say, use it as a um, prayer. You can take one verse and that's how you uh, pray. Okay. You take a verse and you begin to read it. And um, if you affirm it three times, just one verse, uh, three times, and then you begin to pray, how do I need to move forward with this? Okay. Uh, yeah, let me just uh, format that for this one because this is uh, David battling. Um, and, and, you know, people have prayed on other people with things like this, but David is battling with himself. He says in 22, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Question mark. Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime but thou preparest or thou hearest not in the night season and not silent. So this personal relationship is what I saw reading this decades ago. He says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise. You inhabitest the praise. Okay, as you read on, if you really get into it, you see David's emotions changing. I love that. Ah. Uh, I love it because his spirit taught me so much in a time when I thought I was going, I, I had lost my mind, but I saw David over in Samuel where he had lost it. You know, someone that he played for was running after him to kill him because of jealousy. And David could have killed Saul, but he never did. I read about David and I see the experience of him as a real person. He was pouring out. Why? And his emotions were in a state where he seemed depressed, anxious, in need of help, which is human, right? And because of that, I felt him. And I swear, he pulled me up mentally and sustained me daily. You know, it's a wonderful thing to share with you all because um, I, was not, I wasn't gonna go into 22, but when I read his words, this is, this is him. His prayer is asking why. And a lot of people will teach you not to ask why, but you mm -hmm. have to question. And I'm, I'm, I'm not the person that, you know, I'll, I'll listen to people, but I need to hear from God. So he really touched me in some dark days because no one else will allow themselves to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
and he was a man. And some will say, oh, it's allegories. Well, you know what, baby? This man was helping me through some dark seasons. And he didn't give up because the more he prayed and talked to God, you can see his spirit lifting. He even tells God over here, down here, thank you, Lord. He says, but thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praise. So this is where we find God because he knows that in order to get to God, I got to lift up the praise. I got to lift up the praise. That's the other thing for people to know. Our fathers trusted in you. He said, they trusted and thou didst deliver them because you've got to trust God to take you out before you get out. How do you get God to deliver you from something um, and you have not experienced it? You've got to experience a hardship in order for you to trust and to allow the deliverance to come. That's a process. Mm -hmm. So they cried unto thee and were delivered. See, they cried. And you know, sometimes you, you do, you I say use this method, especially when it's someone that's birthing. But as you can see, um, there's times when I still, I cry out because no one hears you in an affliction like you, your body, your mind, and your soul. No one hears that, what you're going through, like that God in you. No one. And, you know, I, I used to say it in a manner where I felt like, Yes, David. I mean, I just feel like all uh, through my life. But, it, you know, the encouragement is, is that David was there to show me in the words. The words became flesh. They, they dwelt among me. And I was able to see I need your encouragement every day to get up and persevere through what seems to be obstacles that I in this here flesh body could never, I need be every hour. So I made him a, a companion and a friend during the time. And I always remember going back and forth. I used to carry my Bible with me everywhere I went because it was my lifeline. So. Here, he admits his humbleness, but I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of people. I'm despised. I, I have nothing. I have nobody. And some people I've heard say, uh, you know, some, it, it, some of that is just depressing. Well, can you not hear what he's saying? He is letting the people know he is depressed. So he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him seeing he delighted in him. Now I'm going to leave it there, but if that's not a shout to revelation and, and wisdom, I don't know what you could do because you're reading something where, yeah, it sounds depressing, but baby, if you keep reading on, you're going to see him lifted up. He talks about all of the obstacles, but he's talking because he needs to face it. It's one thing to walk around the world and you got issues, but if you ain't talking to your maker about the issues that you have, you're going to stay pressed down. The only thing that's going to lift you up is when you start talking to your creator, God. And it's not a God outside of you. A man and a woman, your leaders, mentors cannot fix it. This is where Jesus was on the path to show the people that you have got to have a relationship with Christ individually. He had small groups. He did not have a church. His body was the church, which, which, which is significant to what we are to do with ourselves and the experience, the individual was coming back to a small group 
as a group, but the individual must get Christ in his life. Now that's for those that want it, right? Because the small groups were where they came back together. The 12, the 70, um, and then uh, uh, I can't remember the other one. I ain't, you know, I ain't perfect. I'm like here. And so the reason, oh, the masses, the masses, um, the 70 and the 12. And the reason why it was three groups is because the significance of your true devotion. The initiation of becoming a disciple is your process. Mm. So, yeah. So David and um, Jesus, what is that connection? David is Jesus's great, great, great grandfather. So this lineage of spiritual battling was there. But Jesus came up and this was the time when God said, okay, we're going to change the tradition. We're going to change the way that we did it because people were not getting free. When you look at Jesus, you always want to remember freedom. Salvation is not a spiritual word. I mean, a um, religious word, you know, I'm saved. If I give my life to Christ, I want Christ to touch my mind, my body, my soul, touch my finances, my family. You see, that's spiritual and sad, man, body, and soul. But then I want Christ to go in and touch. I mean, come on out. See, when God gets that wholeness flowing within you, God can come in and touch where there's lack. I want you to touch me, uh, my family. I want you to touch uh, my household. I want you to touch my um, finances, my work. I want you to touch my health. I want you to touch uh, the people in the community. You see, it's inside first and then it's outside. But everyone had been thinking on outside, even when he went and got the disciples. But Jesus could not overcome the temptation if he didn't activate or work with the God in him. Because when you look at his forefathers, see, all of this is generational. They were battling for something. Now, I got to go so y'all can tell me what the battle was for. You know, ain't no right or wrong word. The thing is, is that if you're going to get into this, you're going to prosper. And it's not going to be by your physicality. It's going to be by your spirituality. You know, I bind in heaven and I bind it in earth. If I bind it in heaven and I bind it in earth, that means that I'm working with the elements, even my mind, because my mind is thinking in a place and then I'm going to bind it in earth. I'm going to bind it in my body because it's not the truth of who I am. Now, I'm going to speak, loose the blessing in heaven and loosen their earth. Now, heaven is, I don't believe, outside of me. Heaven is the power of the word that I speak. And um, it can depower me and it can empower me. Because a lot of times we're speaking words in our lives that um, is cursing us. Curse is not just a witch kind of thing where people have talked about it. Um, some parents have cursed their own children by saying negative things. Um, teachers have cursed kids by saying, you know, negative things. I remember. And so we break those spirits in heaven and we break them in earth because the heavenly is the atmosphere that was set around us concerning words. Mm -hmm. You know, I declare and I decree prosperity, healing. I bind the spirit of lack and uh, discord. Uh, your power in your words as you are getting into that wholeness. And, you know, some people make it hard because they intellectualize things. It's not hard to speak. The thing is, is that we've been used to speaking things that really cause lack in our lives because of our programming. So... Um, do you guys have any questions before I go? I'm going to send the tape over. Oh, 
So the battle, I, I would think that that was for him coming into himself, like his his own resurrection. Mm, good. Okay. That's real good. Let's talk about that next week, okay? Or mm -hmm. uh, if we get some more time in, in this week. Um, yeah, I, uh, that's real good because self is the first place that the resurrection is going to happen. It's not going to happen because you're preaching to people out in masses because mm -hmm. you're going to be empty preaching and then they're getting the same emptiness that you got. What you feeling? Right. Makes sense. Ashley, you good? And listening to all of it and, and processing it myself, it makes me think about um, when you have issues and your, your fear, it's like an addiction, right? So it made me think of a 12 step program. And the first step is admitting when you speak it, it no longer has that power over you and you change it. You take that power back. Amen. Okay. So I'm going to put this on YouTube because other people need to be encouraged. Y'all good with that? Yeah. That's fine. Right. And, um, Alana, um, if you want to, if y'all want to come on Sunday, Cause she um, didn't have time to do it. So I guess it would be like Wednesday and Sunday that I will do this. And um, you might, if you come on Sunday, um, I'll, I'll let you know the time. If you want to come, just send some information on what um, you want to pull out of this one. Cause you should piggyback off of what you received in order to gain. Mm -hmm. So you gain this, you always have to go back and look at your scriptures and cross-reference and that was another thing that she told me it's like you guys um were saying that people don't teach the younger people and she said I just can't connect with um the church the way that you know she's been on her and yo you know they they used to come on my bible studies when I did them about three years ago and back two three years ago something like that and um, they said they connected because of the pieces that are not there, such as psychology and, you know, you're bringing in the astros because you can't have wholeness without psychology. Mm -hmm. Theology, people will say one thing about it, but you can't have a body without science because we have anatomy. Right. When they um, try to tell you that God, there's no science to God. You, you can't figure that out, but you, you got body, which has to do with the physical. Then you got the soul, which is a spiritual realm. The, the mind has to do with um, maybe, uh, get clear. Oh, psychology. No, the, yeah, psychology. So you got two 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 areas, physical and psychology. When you transform the mind, then the mind goes into a psychological process and you, you bring it into spirituality. You see, the mind has to take steps as well. So you, you, you don't only deal with science, you're dealing with psychology as well because psychology changes the mind. Like today, you, you're, you're in the place of changing your mind. The mind will change the heart then. The heart will change the soul. Or um, the activity that's been going on over the soul that keeps people from uh, working in their solar area, which is what they need to do. That's your mission in your soul. So psychology and spiritual things um, they do. I mean, you 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 have a lot of um, people in the world that are you know they're working with this now. So anyway, we don't have to just um, expound on it to make everyone believe. You got to believe according to the way that you're walking. But science and spirit, they have to be one because we're people and we're anatomy um, functioning through our uh, in our body, and then we're psychological. We have emotions. And um, we're spiritual, on and on. But once that part is understood and you get it together, and sometimes you don't understand it, it just becomes a part of who you are and what you're doing. Everything begins to work out. Mm -hmm. 
you can't think prosperity and um, then think lack. Right. That's a psychological um, situation that needs to be brought into alignment with what do you really believe? Who is your master truly? And that's a process because when the tempter comes, as with Jesus, go and read his words, use them as affirmations. Satan, thou shalt not tempt me. Satan, get up under my feet. And that's not at other people. We got to get beyond that. You better get Satan on together in your own man, because you know you think dirty, right? And that's how that go. God bless us. And um, y'all have a wonderful day. And um, I will talk to you later. Yes. Love Thank you. you. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.